My name is Rebecca Sampson. I'm at Film Museum in Amsterdam right now. I am from Berlin and I am installing right now my exhibition Apples for Sale about Indonesian migrant workers in Hong Kong. Foam invited uh, German-American photographer Rebecca Sampson to exhibit in Foam 3H, which is our uh, project space devoted entirely to young, talented photographers under the age of 35, um, who engage with the medium of photography in innovative and surprising ways. Uh, Rebecca is showing her project Apples for Sale, for which she um, spent years in Hong Kong um, connecting with Indonesian housemates uh, who work there under the most abominable uh, working conditions. So I first saw the Indonesian housemates in Hong Kong in 2013, but I decided to work on it in 2016. I went to Hong Kong for four months to really get deep into the community. And what was so special about it was that these girls are homeless for one day. They can only leave the house once a week and then you see them in the public park, in street corners, under bridges and um, sitting in front of public toilets. And um, that's how I saw them the first time and got really curious. You can see them working 17 hours every day. I think on average they work 12, but most of the people I know work 17. They can only leave the house once a week. They have uh, to pay 33% of their yearly salary, which is very much to the agency to be even sent to Hong Kong. And uh, the working conditions are harsh. They don't have any privacy. Often they sleep on the mattress in the hallway or in the kitchen. 40% don't have a room for themselves. And even the ones who do, um, it's usually like a tiny room, two, three square meters without a window, so it's, uh, space is a problem in Hong Kong. So in the beginning I thought I would be making a work about the working conditions and I thought it would be easier to actually get in touch with the employers and to maybe see what they're doing in the household. And then I realized it's impossible to get in there. And then I thought, oh, okay, I'll just document their Sundays they spend. And then I realized oh, but that doesn't look like their reality, not at all. So the Sunday is this one day where they go wild. So if you document their Sunday, um, it looks more like youth culture in Asia, people having fun and a great time, which does not show at all their harsh reality. So I wanted to counterbalance that with other visual material. And that is how I ended up using agency material, pretending to be looking for a maid myself and um, that was very heartbreaking to basically see how the agencies send you to get an Indonesian maid from all of the maids Hong Kong has if you want to be really rude and mean to someone because they are the most vulnerable, they are the ones who don't know their rights so very well and um, the agencies know that and they, they use that up to 40% of the Indonesian migrant workers in some way or another have experienced some homosexual relationship with other Indonesian migrant workers. And um, it is very obvious that for sure, as Indonesia is very conservative, especially the lesbian girls come to Hong Kong to enjoy freedom and to be able to do what they want to do. On the other hand, there is um, a social trend to be lesbian. So in many cases, they don't have any privacy. They just dress like partners and they want to have someone to connect to. They're very isolated. They're like not part of Chinese society. They don't have any like, they're just missing connection home. They miss Indonesia. They just, they're isolated and homesick. And um, in many cases, I think, it is some form of a reenactment of traditional Indonesian family structures where one person is the husband and the other one is the wife, and the husband is the boss and the wife follows. While working around the subject, uh, Rebecca encountered that photography as a medium is very much ingrained into the daily lives of, uh, of these women and is being used to sort of escape their reality. Um, uh, and to create parallel realities which exist in the digital sphere, so on social media, uh, on Facebook, 
Um, she approached her subject not just by making documentary images, which she also did, but also by sourcing footage uh, made by these women themselves to complement uh, her vision, uh, and bureaucratic footage from uh, uh, employment agencies, for example, and sort of puzzling together a very complex and layered um, narrative that talks about the situation of these women in, not in a singular way but uh, from many different angles um, and this is what makes this project so special.